Hey friends, welcome back to World Drum Club. I am Kalani Das, your host and teacher here, and I've been getting some questions lately from people about how to help a group of school children uh, enjoy group drumming um, without ha that person having a lot of drumming experience. And I think this might relate you know, a lot of you could relate to this um, because, you know, drumming is kind of a hot thing. Everybody wants to do drumming. But a lot of you are not drummers and percussionists. You might be a, a different kind of instrumentalist, hopefully. Or you might be a music enthusiast and have a musical, you know, propensity for music or skills in music. But you're not really a drummer or percussionist. But you still want to help other people play drums and percussion together. And you can do that. There are ways to do that. But I want to give you... Um, some ways that I think are going to help you be successful and most importantly, help your participants uh, feel successful and have a good time and, you know, have fun and nurturing and rewarding experiences using drums and percussion. So that's what I'm going to talk about quickly, hopefully, in this talk. Uh, so if that, if that sounds like you, something you're interested in, keep on watching. Um, as many of you may know, I'm a, a longtime percussionist. I've been a drummer percussionist for 40, over 40 years. Uh, I'm also a music therapist and a music educator and a performer. You know, I've done pretty much everything in the music industry. And I've written several books, most notably uh, Together in Rhythm, A Facilitator's Guide to Developmental Community Music, and also one called The Way of Music. Uh, I recommend both of those for anyone who's looking for techniques and more of a course, a training course, uh, and you can do this yourself. You can get those books and do your own study on how to, you know, become an expert facilitator and a uh, and very skilled in lots of different types of experiences, not just one type of experience. But I want to review uh, in this video some types of experiences that the that the non percussionist or or kind of non skilled or I don't want to say non skilled. I mean, everybody has some skills, right? But let's just say people that are not. Um, that you don't feel very confident or you don't have a record of playing drums and percussion, right? You don't have a track record of that. But maybe you got a bunch of drums. Like there was one person that just contacted me for a, a video lesson and we that's exactly what we covered was how do, you know, how do I uh, create experiences for people with all these drums that I have, but I'm not a percussionist or I'm not a drummer. So let me, let's go there for a second. So first of all, um, we wanna always use all of the resources that you have available to you. And that includes all the people in the group. So remember, this is not about you and and what you can do or, or what you cannot do or what you don't feel comfortable doing. You can be a facilitator or a guide or a coach. And that means inviting your participants to share what they can do to have their ideas and their suggestions. And so really it starts with questions like who are your participants? What are they doing? You know, what do they need to do? What would be helpful for them? That's your job to find out. Uh, and then you can, you don't have to know everything about the instruments. Let's say you have a bunch of drums and percussion. I don't even know what these are. What are these? Well, make that a little project for your participants. And you can be honest with people and say, look, I just got all these drums and percussion. I don't really know what they are. Can you guys pick one thing each? Take five minutes, get on your phones, because, you know, young people love to get on their phones and look stuff up. Um, come back in five minutes with a little mini lesson. Tell us what you, tell us what this, these things are, right? Turn it into a community learning experience. And all you have to do is ask give them the the space and permission to do that. People love learning things. They love doing things on their own. They don't need to be lectured to by by a single person. If you've got 20 people there, that's 20 minds. You know, that's 20 people that are that want to be active and and to learn things and share themselves. So always remember that use use the group uh and in, but you need to give them space to do that and permission to do that. So allow the group to teach itself. Um, sometimes as teachers, you know, as professors, uh, we don't do enough of that. Um, and it's again, not about, you know, this top down model of like the teacher or the facilitator or knows everything. And they're going to disseminate this knowledge downward as a pyramid. Sometimes you want to flip that over and, uh, just let people, you know, take, 
take it down and, and kind of funnel things into the group. All right. All right. Next, um, you can do some things, some activities that are not particularly rhythmic centric and not rhythmic dependent. All right. So what are those? Well, one category is uh, what we call drum play experiences. Drum play experiences are the non-formal musical use of drums and percussion instruments. So what are some examples of those? That would be like using drums and percussion as art objects or props, um, things, you know, just items that uh, somebody could pantomime something with, like having an agogo and using it as a telephone or something. Now, I realize that these are not particularly musical activities, but we would call these pre-musical and they do get instruments into people's hands and they empower people to define what this thing is. So it's not about learning about what, you know, the, the traditional uses of a bongo drum or cowbell or any other instrument is. It's about helping people feel connected to an instrument and empowering them to tell their own story about what that thing is and what it does. And I like to give people, you know, a prompt like, well, you're going to make up a story about this item. I know you don't know exactly what it is, but you get to tell us what it is, whatever you think it is. And it could be, you know, something from history or it could be something from the future or something from another culture or something from another planet, whatever. Just make up a story. And, you know, those kinds of experiences are fun. People often come up with crazy ideas. It's funny. There's a lot of bonding that goes on. Then from there, you can you can introduce a formal you know, definition or formal uses of something. But those are what we call pre-musical. They can even be post-musical, like just if you have some extra time, make up some uh, stories about what the instruments could be. All right, so, and you can make up some artwork too. You can have, take the instruments, make a sculpture, lay it out on the floor or build something up. Uh, that's fun too. And those are extra musical, meaning outside of music, right? But they're related. And it's a way to use the instruments in a, in a creative way, in an artistic way. And it can be a very meaningful way if you give people prompts that invite them to relate something of, of themselves, relate a personal experience to that drum play experience, to that creative process, all right? I talk about that a lot in um, the Together in Rhythm book, also the Amazing Gymnasium book, um, which is on the Drum Fun DVD, which is also for iPad, now on Patreon, all the Drum Fun experiences there. So that's this, a lot of that stuff is on there. That really, uh, reminds me of the other category, which is a musical game. Uh, musical games can be somewhat rhythmic or music dependent, but they can also not be. They don't have to be. So a lot of the musical games don't happen in a rhythmic context. So if you're somebody that's not really feeling confident about your own ability to play and maintain a steady rhythm or a specific rhythm, you could look into doing musical games. And a really simple game, uh, this comes from the classroom uh, elementary school classrooms, uh, I call Where's Froggy? You know, you, you just take a wooden frog and you hide it somewhere in the room. Somebody's outside waiting, call them in, they try to find it. And you basically use this idea of hot and cold with the group uh, together playing a rumble or a roll. You know, the, the, the louder, the closer the person gets to it. So they don't know where this thing is hidden, right? And you're trying to guide them to it. And you can have the group playing a roll or a rumble. The closer the person which we call the, the seeker or the finder, the closer they get to the item, the louder the group plays, farther away that person gets, the softer the group plays. So things like that that are just using what I call sound blobs, you know, just blobby sound like rolls and rumbles. Um, we're just using volume basically at that point, not, not any specific rhythms. You can do things like that. Really fun. People love that, especially younger children. Um, you can start that as early as four, you know, three, four years old, as soon as they can walk and get around you could have younger children doing that. But everybody loves that kind of thing. Again, not the most musical things, but pre-musical or extra musical. They can serve as warm-ups or just something fun if you've got a few minutes after at the end of your uh, session with people. Um, another thing you can do is just games that rely on, a, on the idea of a simple beat, right? Simple rhythm, just holding a pulse, playing together. There's lots of games that you can do with that. Um, Another category is the um, drum circle, right? Just do a community drum circle, traditional drum circle, which is pure improvisation uh, without or with a minimum of conducting, uh, but 
but musically guided. So I call that the, you know, the music facilitation. And that's what the the Drum Circle, a musical approach DVD, which is now also on Patreon for patrons. That's what that's about. So if you have some musical uh, skills that you can use, like the ability to just keep a beat or the ability to gradually speed up, gradually slow down, gradually get louder, gradually get softer, which uh, hopefully, you know, you can do. Um, if you could, if you think you could do those things while other people are playing, uh, you could do a lot of those techniques and you don't have to get up out of your seat and, you know, be a conductor and jump around and be like the spot, have the spotlight on you and be the center of attention. Uh, to do that, you can do a lot of facilitating um, through the music that you play. Now, you can then bump that up to a little bit more of a higher control level by doing a conducted drum circle or what people would call a modern drum circle. Um, you've seen lots of videos about that, and that's kind of like the last 20 years uh, version. Uh, it's another deriv It's a derivative of the traditional drum circle idea where somebody does a lot of conducting you know, hands and arms and stopping and starting and all that. And that is great for when people really don't know what to do or they don't have a lot of experience and they want they want to be guided and they really want to be told kind of when to play, how to play, you know, all that. So um, if people are, you think they're wanting that kind of uh, conducting, and remember conducting is controlling, but it that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes that gives people kind of a relief because they don't have to think as much. They don't have to be as creative. Um, they don't have to listen to one another as much. <laughs> I'm trying to frame these in a positive. Uh, you, you see what I'm saying? So on one side, you know, people don't listen as much to each other when they're watching one person and getting instructions from that one person. So that conducting is really a, a top-down model, but it's really efficient. So if you want to stop a whole group at the same time, you know, you can just go like that and hopefully everybody will stop or they probably will stop. So if you really feel like you need more organization of the group and you don't mind that it puts them in more of a follower mode and it doesn't give them as much autonomy, it doesn't give them as much freedom to you know choose how they're gonna participate as individuals, a conducted drum circle could be a great solution. All right, Another level from that is guided interactive drumming, which actually does require a fair amount of drumming skills. So we're not gonna cover that. I'm not gonna talk about that in this. You've also got drumming ensembles, which I'm, again, we're gonna stay away from because that requires a lot of drumming skills. Um, other things you can try that, that you could do successfully if you're a musician or you have some musical abilities, but not necessarily drumming abilities, is what we call a drum along. A drum along is anytime you have a group of people accompanying a song on their instruments. The accompaniment is just a play along. It's not uh, anything formalized. There's no specific parts that have to be played. So it's just like, you know, shaking, giving people shakers or, or even drums. I would say for drum alongs or, or you know, sing along, basically, you don't want to have a lot of loud instruments because you won't be able to hear the song. So use your common sense and, you know, think about quantities and volume of instruments. If you're going to do that in a group, obviously, if you're handing out 50 drums or 20 drums, uh, you might want to either cover them with something so they're not as loud or use a different technique, like just fingers um, on the drums if you're going to be singing over it. But the thing I really like about a drum along is that, A, it provides structure because you're playing to a song. And if people know the song, which presumably they do, because you want to use popular songs that people know, like folk songs, pop music, etc. cetera. Um, and you can even make up a song in the moment that's super short. And if it's repetitive and catchy, people will, you can just do it right then. But the song should be familiar. It should be easy, uh, you know, well-known, etc. And it should be suited for drumming. So, you know, tempo, meter, all that. Uh, but you can do, if you can lead a song, you could have a really successful experience by just having people play the drums, but play it to the song, right? Pretty simple. All right, so that's it for this talk. Uh, we can review. You've got drum play experiences, which are kind of, you can think of them as the art, making art uh, with the instruments, all right? In a respectful way, wanna make sure people are safe, instruments are safe, etc. You've got musical games, 
which you can do. And I've got a zillion of those. Um, you can go to get the Drum Fun DVD. Those are in the Amazing Gymnasium. They're also now available on the Patreon site, patreon.com slash Kalani. For all the patrons, they're all included. Lots and lots of games. Um, you've got the drum circle, a traditional drum circle idea, which is improvised, just playing whatever with a little bit of musical guidance, you know, shaping it a little bit. And then you've got the conducted drum circle, which is a lot more structured and more of a top-down, uh, you know, conducted experience by an individual, um, which may be good for your particular situation. So you can look at that too. Uh, and then we've got the drum along. And again, somebody with maybe some music background, as long as you can carry the tune, you know, or sometimes you don't have to. I was in Hong Kong once and I was a guest facilitator. And I actually, all I had to do was ask somebody in the group if they would lead a song, because I didn't know because they're speaking um, Cantonese. And I wanted them to, you know, sing a song that, that was familiar for them. So who am I to, you know, come in and say, well, let's all sing this song, because I don't know. I don't know what songs they know. But getting back to the very first thing, use the people in your group. I just said, who has a great song they'd like to share right now? And then they just launch into it. And all I do was support it, you know, the best I could musically. So remember, you don't have to know everything. You don't have to do everything. You can use your participants. And that's this, actually the sign of a great manager, a great leader, is picking the right people to do the right thing at the right times. And that is the skill that I'm really talking about here. All right. So leadership, management, skills, um, take some of the burden off yourself and you don't have to, you know, have all the answers all the time. You absolutely don't, but you do need to pay attention, listen, uh, you know, remember that you've got a lot of talented people sitting right there in, in the group with you and give them the permission and the space and the time to, to really shine. And I think everybody in that instance will, will, you know, have a great time. It'll feel great. You'll have a wonderful opportunity for them and the experience should be a, a fun one and a memorable one. All right. I hope this video, watching this video has been fun and memorable for you. If you'd like to add anything uh, to help our community around the globe of drummers and facilitators and percussionists and enthusiasts, please leave your kind and helpful comments down below. If you'd like to connect with me more uh, and dig in a little bit deeper, you can do that at patreon.com slash Kalani. Thanks for everything you do. Now go out and make some great music. I'll see you guys soon.